Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Chief Audio Man. Here at The Chief Audio Man, we help folks find high-value, hi-fi, home theater, and headphone equipment. And, whoops, today we're talking about the Odyssey LCD-X and the hi fi Man Edition XS. They're really nice headphones. They could be your endgame headphones. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the Odyssey LCD-X and the hi fi Man Edition XS. Another YouTuber sent these out to me. I'm not gonna mention him by name because maybe he'll get mad. I don't know. We never really discussed that part of it. Anyway, these are the Odyssey LCD X. They're built very well. The exterior is very nice metal and it looks like it was machined. All right, it's held on there by four Phillips screws and then underneath the ear cup holder thingy attaches to the headband with another Phillips screw and it looks like a uh, lock washer. The adjustability is done by this metal post that has some knurled edges into the side. Basically holds it in different positions and that is held in place by a metal box that has a set screw on it. So it looks like you can control the amount of tension. On top of that, there's a leather perforated headband with quite large holes in it and a carbon fiber, I believe, headband here. Yeah, that's carbon fiber. Same thing on the other side. The connection into each ear cup is a mini XLR. Very cool design. They also use this type of design in the Meze Elite. Very expensive headphone. And the new Apos Audio Caspian. Anyway, it's very cool. Now, sometimes it's a bit frustrating because I don't always have cables lying around. However, I did talk to Hart Audio Cables. I'm not affiliated with Hart in any way. They've never paid me. They've never asked me to say anything. But I like their cables so much that I do talk about them. So Hart will make you cables that have whatever terminations you need. But then they'll have these XLR connections, which means you can use different ends. So you can use XLR. You can use this one's a 3.5 millimeter. You can use 4.4 Pentagon. You can use the big 6.35 millimeter headphone jack, whatever it is. So you don't have to have a whole bunch of different headphone cords. You can have a bunch of different termination cords and a bunch of different, I don't know, plug into the source cords, and then you're rocking and rolling. It's pretty cool. Very nice. I think Heart Cables is awesome. The cable that it comes with is okay. I mean, I like the Heart Cable better. Anyway, it's the mini XLRs and it looks like a twisted pair here going into a four wire braid throughout the entirety of the rest of it and into a big, big headphone jack, 6.35 millimeter headphone jack. I don't know. I mean, it feels a little bit chintzy for headphones that are $1,200 and $1,600 respectively, which is, leads me into another point. There is a creator package and a non-creator package. I don't particularly know what the difference is. I think the non-creator package may come with a case. I don't know. The takeaway here is one is 1200, one is 1600. So go ahead and, and grab the creator package for $400 less. These weigh 22 ounces, so about a pound and a half. Uh, their sensitivity is 103 dB and they have a 20 ohm impedance. You know, they never really see, I, obviously I put some juice through them, but they never seemed like they, I ran these off a of dongle back and they sounded great. When I put them on like a Shelly E2, they uh, got a little bit more dynamic, which I don't know, makes sense. You have a lot more power to work with. So they rotate like this, go on the brain housing unit like this. Very good engagement because it has a well, headband and I can hear myself very, very well. So there's really hardly any change in my voice when I have these open back headphones on. Quite open, built very well. A little bit heavy. Some people will consider them a bit heavy. Uh, build quality is really flawless. The Meze Elites at four thousand dollars may be a little bit prettier, but I mean this is this is like a Jeep. The Hi-Fi Man Edition XS. I have these out here for really comparison reasons only. I did a video on them already. I'll put it up here. Ooh, up here, if I can remember. These are eighteen ohm impedance and uh, have a sensitivity rating of ninety two. DB with the Odyssey LCD X having a sensitivity rating of 103 dB versus a sensitivity of 93 dB on the Hyphaman Edition XS. That means these, depending upon the you know impedance and stuff, are going to play louder at the same given power rating. 
The good news is I didn't particularly have any issue powering either of these off of a dongle deck like the iDiz S9 Pro or a new little one I got from iBasso. Very good. Ear pads are very well done. They feel like real leather. I don't know. Either, either way, they're very, very well done. I don't feel like, I don't see how they're coming off. I think they're attached to a plastic housing and they may pop out. These aren't mine though, so I'm not gonna be ripping into any of them. They feel like they're never gonna break. And even if they do, I mean, there's all sorts of adjustment. You can adjust the set screw over there. You can adjust this for the uh, ear cup holder thing. You can adjust the ear cup holder in and of itself. So if this thing loosens up, you can just tighten it up. Sound signature wise. Um, these are one of the funnest, but yet I think still balanced in many respects, headphone I've ever had, and probably the most refined, with the exception of the Meze Elite. Meze Elite had a bit of a different sound signature, though. The Aussie LCD X, I want to say they're all about the bass, but they're not all about the bass, because the top end and even vocals are very organic, very believable, and true to what I think life sounds like top end is a little bit exciting at times and with the wrong electronics on it can be a bit almost intense i will still say this the lcdx on every single piece of electronics i put on it still maintained its composure and didn't acquiesce to the sound of the electronics so it never sounded bad I almost feel like this is a V-shaped curve, but I think the reason why I feel like it's a V-shaped curve is because there's so much bass presence, but I don't think it's boosted down there. I think it's actually, I wouldn't say flat, but it's well behaved on the bottom end. I just think the bass is so good, it feels like it's boosted. Tone texture from the bass is clarity from the bass, really otherworldly. There is caramel. There is punch. Mm. Bass is really good. I'm not saying the mid-range isn't good either. The mid-range is fantastic. Frankly, the top end is fantastic too. Alice in Chains MTV Unplugged. The bass line in there seemed so much more present, but yet didn't seem out of line with the rest of the music. Again, the LCD X just feels like it's very balanced, almost expertly balanced. It is a very good headphone. Compared to the hi fi Men Edition XS, I love this headphone because I feel like it maintains an awful lot of characteristics of the Sundara, but it brings in a, a lot more bass than the Sundara. When I was a being the hi fi Men Edition XS and the LCD X, I, in my head, thought they were gonna sound pretty similar. Well, th they do have some similar characteristics, but the LCD X is a pretty significant step up. Not from a detail perspective, and not from an overall sound signature, but from the details, the nuances of the bass specifically. The LCD X's bass seems a little bit more, not a little bit more, a lot more organic. It just seems absolutely real, boosted, but yet balanced, which it's not. It's pretty remarkable. These are a lot lighter and they sound incredible. And I think at $500, this is to me, one of my, if not my favorite open back headphone at this point. Gives one all of the detail of the Sundara, a lot of openness, but brings in enough bass that it feels exciting. Now, with that said, the LCD X has really unbeatable bass, mid-range that is organic and realistic, and top end that is detailed, airy, and fun, and never feels overly done, never feels too spicy or too chalky. The LCD X, to me, is one of the best headphones I've heard. I like the Meze Elites. These, at $1,200, I know, that is a ton of money to ask for. But at $1,200, this is something that if somebody spends a lot of time in headphones, I don't think this is too much to spend on a headphone. And frankly, what I think doesn't matter. If you get a lot of enjoyment out of headphones and you're spending a ton of time with headphones, then I don't think there's anything wrong with $1,200 headphones. These are built very well, perfectly so, really. They may not have all of the 
refinement of the build on the Meze Elite, but they feel just as strong, if not stronger than the Meze Elites. I think most people are gonna like the LCDX over the Meze Elites. When I had the Meze Elites, it took me a while to kind of understand what was going on with the layering things. The soundstage had me turning my head often. Movies were brilliant through them. I assume gaming would be very good through them as well. I don't have anything bad to say about the Odyssey LCD X. Maybe the price, I'm not even gonna say I don't agree with the price. I think this is a $1,200 headphone. I think it's worth every penny. I think if you can get it used, great. I do think that hi Man Edition XS does a lot of the same things that the LCD X does, but it doesn't do any of them as good. Maybe the top end is as good, but mid-range tonality, base tonality, base texture amount. This is more linear. I think a more balanced frequency response. This is a better headphone to me than the hi fi Men Edition XS. However, I enjoy both of them. And if I am, I, these are a little bit heavy. So if I'm wanting a bit of a break from these, which are a bit heavy, or if I'm traveling, although I did bring these traveling, I'll probably grab the hi fi Men Edition XS. If I'm sitting at my desk and I'm doing something for pleasure and my neck has a lot of energy in it, I'm, 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 grabbing the, uh, I'm grabbing the Odyssey LCDX every time. They're really remarkable. $1,200, a lot of people are going to say, I thought you were the cheap audio man. Cheap is relative. And if one is a mechanic and they wanna buy the best tools available, i.e. snap-on tools or something like that, they're going to get their money's worth. The return on investment is going to be great. Same thing with the LCDX. If one is going to use them while gaming, while watching movies, of course, while listening to music, perhaps even while working. Then a thousand dollar investment in sound or a tool for you may be a really great value. Who knows? It all depends on you. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms. We also have a patron only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Tidal or Amazon Music. There are links in the description. Click on those links. Try it out. Each one of them is running some type of special right now. You get at least one month for free to try it out. You can also use the affiliate links in the description. Both the Odyssey and the hi in Edition XS will be affiliate links, which means if you click through and buy the product, I will get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen through your Odyssey LCDX or your hi in Edition XS and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. <music>